What's up y'all, Logan Parker, Heirloom Builders. Welcome back. Um, we're at the Wedding Barn. Today is April 8, 2020, and we have got the rough under slab plumbing nearly 100% complete. And today we're gonna be talking about the five most important things when it comes to under slab prep. Here we go. I'm here with Jason Hicks, our concrete and grading man here on the under slab. And um, what's up, Jason? Hey there. So what do you think are the, the let's say three most important parts some, of foundation prep? Some quick bullet points is uh, first and foremost, you wanna make sure everything you're doing is on solid ground. If you have any that's not, you wanna take it out. If you have to go too deep, you might have to get an engineer's input on how to correct that. Sometimes they want you to just keep going deeper. Sometimes they'll allow you to put slow with fill in. But you wanna make sure you got a really solid ground. Like I said, if you find any bad spots, you want to deal with them then, or it could make your building suffer in the future. Second, we put this stone in. On this particular slab, we're having to put a lot of stone in. So we want to make sure we compact this. With it being clean stone, it's going to compact at a thicker layer. But <clears throat> we definitely would not pour the concrete without compacting the stone. And a, a third point I would say is to make sure your formwork is accurate as possible. When you set the when you set the building up with batter boards, you want to have string lines. Double check your square. Double check your dimensions. If you have to move anything, you got to double check again. Batter board gets nicked, bumped a little bit. You got to double check that because it could throw you off. So those would be the three most important things to me. Cool. And so with all this gravel, we're spending a lot of time here making sure that it is graded out pretty flat yeah if you you might not can see it on your video but i have a laser level over here that that gives us within the uh, uh, it's tighter than an eight inch eight inch so it keeps us pretty tight so we know what are we shooting for in terms of the concrete slab thickness four inches on this particular floor it has a 20 inch turn down around the edges with 20 inch pure column footings this is a center holes, vogue like holes in the gravel in the center of the slab. And they're gonna support their thickened concrete footers that are gonna support the extra load where the posts come down to support the framing above it. So the other two things that are really important about under slab prep is getting this plumbing in the right spot, bedded in gravel, penetrated through the wall at the right spot to go to the septic area in foundation sleeves. That's the important part. We want to make sure that they are covered in a pipe sleeve so that any expansion and contraction from that concrete is not going to break up that pipe. You'll notice there's a couple of things I wanted to point out about this under slab plumbing that's really important. Um, one is that we have bedded all of this pipe the drain pipe and pea gravel. This is uh, a number 78 stone, I believe it's called. And it's about quarter, half inch in size. It's pretty small stuff. It's easy to move around. It's easy to rake around and get it in the right spot. And it doesn't damage the pipe should the pipe get stepped on. Um, unlike some of that bigger gravel over here, the 67 stone, it's much more coarse and sharp could bust a pipe up. Um, the second is protecting the water supply line in this one inch thick insulation. And that's gonna keep also the pipe protected and insulated from freezing temperatures. Um, and you'll see we've got this pipe running all the way. This is a cold water supply line that's coming all the way up to the catering sink for washing hands and this hot water line still needs to be insulated um, so that's a really important factor it's bedding the pipe in gravel insulating with insulation and you can see on this far end the four inch pipe as it penetrates the foundation wall is encased in a five inch pvc pipe so it needs to be two pipe size diameters greater than the pipe that's going through it so that any expansion and contraction of that concrete is not going to bust the pipe part. 
Um, let's see. One of the most important things to make sure that we do when we're doing under slab plumbing is to fill all the drain pipes. And, and you'll see that we've got some really tall stand pipes coming out of the slab. Marcos, which one of the one is, is the one that you filled up? Is there, there's water in the top of this pipe right here? Yeah. So the highest pipe here has got water in it and we wanna make sure, how long do you make that sit for about? 30 minutes, an hour? Yeah, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, you know. Just to check if every joint, if every joint is dry, if the is good, it's only 15 minutes. Yep, and you'll you'll not only be able to see leaks, uh, but you'll see that water level drop if there are any leaks in the pipe. Um, normally that is the job of the inspector to come and take a look to make sure, but on this, um, but on this barn here, we don't have a plumbing permit because um, it's on a bona fide farm, so we don't have anything other than an electrical permit. So we're just testing this ourselves to make sure that it checks out and we're good to go before we cover it in concrete. Because that's the thing, once you cover it in concrete, there's no going back. Um, unless you got a jackhammer and a concrete saw, and we don't want to have to deal with that. So you know, we're going to get this right the first time. And let's see, we've got these black caps on each one of the tops of these toilet drains. And... Am I right in saying, Marcos, that you capped those off as you were filling the pipe so that it could let air out and it would it would surface all the way to the top yeah. of the pipe? So we don't have an air lock in there that keeps the water from, or the air from venting. Always I do, myself I do, use all the, all the lower point, I fill it out so the water is coming all the way to the top with the first joint. But this joint is very high, so I have to fill it all the way up. Because if I put a cap first, when I fill it up, Air gets locked in the pipe. So. Yeah, air gets locked in the pipe and it'll just be air. Um, and you know, in some of these branch drains right here instead of water, so you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to tell if it was leaking or not. So it's it's really important to let you know let the water basically come up to the top of each one of these pipes and then cap it off to prevent that air lock problem. Anyway, so those are the five most important steps about under slab plumbing. I hope you got something out of this video. We are going to be filming every stage of this project. So make sure to subscribe to our channel so that you can stay tuned and see how it's done. Um, as always, y'all, thanks for watching. Until the next time, peace out.